grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. If you're familiar with the passage that I read in the worship video, the parable of the weed, weeds and the wheat, um, you'll notice that I chopped it off halfway through. Actually, I didn't chop off the parable. I chopped off Matthew's explanation of the parable of the weeds and the wheat. And I say Matthew's interpretation because many scholars believe that Matthew inserted his understanding of that parable into that into this story to achieve a certain result. And I'm sure there's a lot of truth to that, and there's a lot of truth to Matthew's interpretation. But I find Matthew's interpretation boxes this story in to the point where it becomes a bludgeon. We, we have to figure out who is in and who is out, because this fits Matthew's understanding of the gospel really well. You'll notice if you read Matthew, he's always trying to figure out who's on one side and who's on the other. Here we have the weeds and the wheat. In other places he has the sheep and the goats. In other places he has the faithful and the unfaithful bridesmaids. He's dividing the world into who's in and who's out. And the understanding is, because he was writing for his community was, the people who were listening to this story, they were in. Everyone else was out. But as I read Jesus' words, even within Matthew's Gospel and in through the other Gospels, and I hear Paul's testimony of his experience of Jesus, that is not what Jesus came to do. That is not who Jesus is. And that is not who Jesus has called us to be. I think this story is less about finding out who's a weed and who's a wheat, who's going to be the righteous and who's going to be the unrighteous, who's going to go into the kingdom of God and shine like the sun, and who is going into the fire to be burned. I don't think that's a story about the world. I think that's a story about us. It's about you. It's about me. You'll notice in the story that God created everything. God, the sower, threw the good seed in and the weeds sprung up and Jesus said, or the parable says, don't rip out the weeds because you're going to take the wheat with you. Because that's the story of what's happening within us. We both have weed and we both have wheat in us. We have the wheat, which is the blessed life that God has given us. It's the joy and the compassion and the faithfulness. It's us when we model Christ and his life most best. The weed are things like our ego, our pettiness, the things that put up walls between each other, the things that bring us into conflict. Those are the weeds living alongside the wheat. And you'll notice that the transformation comes when the weeds are pulled out and the wheat is pulled out together and they're separated and then the fire is going to burn the weeds. That all these things that keep us from being who God wants us to be, that part of us will be burned, will be destroyed, and we will be transformed into the new creation that God wants us to be. We will awaken to that new life, that new way of being, that new way of looking at the world, the new way of relating, because that is the kingdom that God has for us. Because I get thinking about this, what does it mean to have a weed and a wheat living beside you? Well, I think of two examples. One of them, when I was an intern, actually, at the Zion Lutheran Church in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, and I guess after I left, a, a woman started coming to the church, and she was everything you want. She was a professional. She was an accountant. She was ready to get involved. So everyone did what churches do. They put her on church council. She became the treasurer. And so this wonderful, faithful woman was running the books for the bunch of years. And you probably know where I'm going with this. Because one day at Synod Convention, when they were, were reading the reports of how much money the church had given to the Synod, what the treasurer had reported to council and what the treasurer had reported to the synod were two different numbers. It appeared that this woman was skimming off the top, 
uh, taking money from the church, embezzling from the congregation. She was a weed living among the wheat. And then fast forward a few years later, and I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia, and I'm the pastor with my former spouse at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection. And we had this guy who was a total pain. He was a total weed. He was um he would literally write me memos every week on everything I was doing wrong in my job. He would write letters to the bishop, telling everything the bishop was doing wrong in his job, telling him how to run the church. And he would visit our little old ladies, pressuring them to give money to the church and into the, our endowment fund. And he was just like this royal pain. However, he would also go visiting in the uh, seniors' lodges. And one night, he sat up all night with a woman in our congregation who had no family. This uh, senior lady was taking her final breaths, and it was clear she wasn't going to live through the night. And he sat there the whole night holding her hand. And when I asked him why he did this, did he know her all that much and why he felt he needed to do it? And he said, no one deserves to die alone. This was his wheat side of it coming out rather than his weed. And so when I think of you and I think of me, think, are we a weed or are we a wheat? Well, we're both. We have all of that living inside of us. But there will be day, a day when the weed will be separated from the wheat. All that is broken within us will be healed. All that is keeping us from being who God wants us to be will be taken away and burned. And we will be left with the wheat. And we will shine like the sun, as the scripture says, if you read later in the parable. We will shine. We will live in the kingdom that God wants us to live in. So think of you as weed. Think of you as wheat. Because God loves both. And one day you will live into your fullest. And may this be so among us. Amen.